Thank you very much for uh, joining this session. I know it's a hard time. You know, we all had lunch. You know, we're kind of getting sleepy. Hopefully, this talk is not going to be boring for you. And um, <clears throat> my name is Dan Dimitar. I'd like to start with a um, quote that I think defines the essence of our um, cybersecurity industry. And this quote says, if you know the enemy and you know yourself, you shouldn't fear anything. And I think this is quite good, and we'll discuss about this a little bit later. So my name is Dan Dimitar. I graduated university f almost four years ago. It's been a long time. Since then, I've been, I joined Kaspersky's lab, Global Research and Analysis Team, and I mostly do threat intelligence and uh, big data. So I'm writing tools um, for threat intelligence that is helping my that are helping my team. Um, further research and discover new stuff. And I'm also interested in big data, correlating stuff, and getting meaningful results. Also, if you don't know about my team, um, it's called Global Research and Analysis Team. It was founded almost 10 years ago. This year, we celebrated um, our 10th anniversary. And we are highly specialized in um, finding, analyzing, and protecting against APTs, advanced threats, or um, highly uh, um, attacks against banks, governments, power plants, you name it. So, a little um, history. In our 10, 10 years of existence, we managed to find a lot of interesting stuff. You might have heard about... Um, oops, pointer is not working. You might have heard about DoQ, Ghost, Flame, you might have heard about um, Epic Turla, you might have heard about Carbonac. Who heard about Carbonac? Here. Perfect. So uh, the leader got caught. It's a, it was a big win for us. And you know, you might ask yourself, hey Dan, um, why why do you only show 2017? Like, um, sorry, 2016. Well, the answer is because 2017 wouldn't fit in the slide. Like, we managed to um, uncover more than 100 uh, APT groups, uh, different APT groups, and uh, it couldn't fit on the screen. So, yes, it's there. Are, those are the, that. It's that many. If you want to catch up with uh, our latest research, feel free to check our securities.com. It's our blog post where we post our newest research, newest findings, but it's not totally um, new, mostly because, or we don't publish most of our, all, our, all our stuff on this website, mostly because we have our private reports, and actually we are publishing new research every week. So. Our private reports, they don't go here, but we also published our latest, some latest stuff on this website. But during our security analyst conference, which uh, happened this year, uh, two gentlemen, way smarter than I am, they presented their idea of the information war. And this information war, they said, has three parts. It has the... Um, it has the mass opinion manipulation, which we're not going to talk about uh, today. And it has two other components, the cyber, cyber espionage and cyber sabotage. Those two components, they both use only one um, in a specific, uh, specific uh, um, um, code, and they use malware. Well, they use malware in order to uh, gain persistence, in order to gain, um, to able to um, enter new networks or to um, exfiltrate data. And today we're going to talk about malware. And more, most importantly, we're going to talk about finding malware. Does this piece of code look familiar to you? It's kind of like C code type. Nobody? And, and, okay, we have some, somebody here. Okay, so this is this piece of like uh, looking C type code is called Yara. With Yara, basically, it's an open source tool. Um, <coughs> its creator once uh, calls it the uh, Swiss Army knife for uh, pattern matching, and it basically allows you to write um, comp specific and advanced um, rules to match files. 
So let's say you have one binary, you have one sample, and then you can write specific um, specific rules in order to try to find similar similar samples that are kind of identical with the same sample uh, that you're analyzing. And basically, you can use Yara. You can download, you compile it, and then you can run Yara over a collection of files which are not, let's say, uh, um, are not um, clustered or are, uh, you don't know what they are. And then you can try to see if those files match your Yara rules. And then you can find similarities, code similarities between those two samples. And basically, you can say those samples are from the same family, are from the same APT group, or not. Well, there's a problem with this. It's the problem that you need to hunt in the wild. You, you can write the best Yara rule, but if you don't know where to uh, run the Yara rule or in, or you don't know where to search for, or you don't have, don't have where to search your Yara rule, then it's kind of useless. So, Eh, most of you might be using VirusTotal. I'm using it a lot. In VirusTotal, there's an option. Um, there's a there's a button called VirusTotal Intelligence, and in that intelligence, you can run your Yara rules over their collection. It's called RetroHunt, and basically, uh, VirusTotal allows you to run your Yara rules over their entire collection, which is huge. It takes some time to scan it um, entirely, but you get your results. You can get your matched files by your Yara rule. Well, that's pretty good. Cool. That's pretty good about this. But there are some issues. First of all, you have to upload your Yara rule on VirusTotal. What happens if you have a TLP read only for your team Yara rule? Well, you can't. You can't actually upload it on VirusTotal. Secondly, their collection of files it's theirs. What if you have your own collection and you don't want to upload them on VirusTotal, but you want to scan them? in a distributed, dynamic way, like they do with RetroHunt. Well, because, because of these issues, we decided to create our own, um, our own scanner. And it's not called Dolores, although I wished, because it's my favorite character. It's called Clara. So, Clara, basically what it does is a distributed Yara scanner. It allows you to Submit your, uh, submit your Yara rules on a web interface. You submit them, you click run, and then they get, they get distributed to multiple servers. Servers start scanning the file repositories they have with your Yara rules, and you get back your results. Furthermore, you, you have the option of um, implementing groups, such that you can have a group for your team, you can have a group for your customers. You can have a group for whatever you prefer. And in those groups, people are, are allowed to scan different, um, different files. And basically, it's a neat way to just fire a CR rule, upload it on the web interface, and you get the results back. You don't have to run it on your computer. You don't have to execute any command, like uh, commands from your terminal. Although I'm a fan of terminal, like running commands in the terminal, but some people, they just prefer to, and it's easier to just upload them on the web interface. So you might say, okay, then, but, you know, like, why should I use Clara? Well, if you have your error rules and you want to check against if they're correct, if they match some files, if they don't uh, fire false positives, you might want to do it because um, the cycle of creating a Yara rule is m m quite complicated because you first need to create a Yara rule, then you have to test for false positives, then you have to tweak it again, make it better, um, s I know, um, use some s uh, more relaxed options or m add some more uh, conditions, and then write again. Run it again, and then when you're happy with your rule, you have to run it over your collection of um, samples, unknown samples or malwares or whatever. Then another reason is that you have, you might face some problems if you're running locally on your laptop, especially with co with collections that are higher than like big, that are big in size, like one terabyte, two terabytes, five terabytes. You can't actually run this one on your laptop. 
mostly because it takes a lot of time, and secondly, because you can't, you don't have a lot of storage uh, available uh, for you. So, the solution would be to actually run it in the cloud. As I said, like RetroHunt. Then, you want, you have another option where you can, you, your Yara rule, which is amazing, it's like best Yara rule ever, didn't hit on any files. Does it mean it's a bad Yara rule? No. It means that right now you didn't match anything, but you might match something next tomorrow. You might match it in one year. So basically what you want to do is, and what's one possible scenario would be to have all your files, suspicious files from your, your organization, your, um, your SOC center will collect them, you dump them in your, um, one of your servers, and then you periodically scan those files with your Yara rules. And let's say it might not match today, but in next year, your Yara rule that you created two years ago might match. And you'll see, oh, this is a sample. We got hit by this APT, and now they're trying to hit us again. So that's, that's like pretty cool. Furthermore, you can have your results shared in the, in a nice way on the web interface. So instead of like sharing results, Yara results by email, which is like so 1990s, you can just send, um, send the link on Slack and then like your colleague from the same team can just like click on the link and get the results. And f lastly, you can also run Yara trainings like we do. Basically, we, um, with people, they, ch they don't have to install Yara on their laptop. They can just upload the rules on their, uh, on the web interface. This is also useful for people who don't know how to compile Yara. And you might end up like with uh, issues like .NET is missing or like some library didn't compile correctly. So basically, you can have like a clean web interface where they just fire the rules. So, okay. Let's talk about like the project itself. How does it look like briefly? Basically, it's Python, an SQL database, and of course, it's using the Yara, Yara uh, binary. We didn't modify the Yara binary. Basically, you can just download it from GitHub and you can run it. In terms of the architecture, it's not super complicated. Basically, we have like a um, dispatcher and multiple workers. They connect to the dispatcher. Dispatcher gets the jobs from the database and the users can submit jobs and uh, they c you can create groups and jobs and whatever. You can create them on the web interface, which then changes um, the database. And whenever a an user submits a new job, the job gets inserted into the database, and then the workers will ping dispatcher, and dispatcher will say, okay, let me check the database, checks the database, and says, okay, I have a new job for you. Here it is. I have assigned this job for you. When the worker finishes, finishes the scan, returns the results back to dispatcher, dispatcher notifies by email the user and you have your results on the web interface. So it's pretty simple. The idea is that you can add as many workers as you want. You can have unlimited workers. And nowadays, with the increasing cost of um, supercomputers, like, it's better to have like 100, 100 like, um, not so powerful computers rather than just one powerful computer. So that's pretty, pretty neat about this. So I wouldn't be telling you this if, and I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be presenting you this project if, um, it you wouldn't have the chance to, to play with it. So basically, this year we open source the project. You can check it on GitHub and um, you can install it in your infrastructure and run distributed Yara rules. So I think this is pretty good. In terms of installing it, we run it on Ubuntu. We ran it on Ubuntu. But it also works on Debian, Ubuntu 16 or 18 LTS. Basically, you need, uh, you need Python. You need supervisor and uh, Python to, with virtual environment. You have, you need the same, you need to have the same setup for, um, for the worker or plus the Yara binary and an SQL database. We recommend MariaDB, but you can also use MySQL up to you. Doesn't matter. So as I said, it's a worker dispatcher, um, worker dispatcher, um, paradigm and it has a web interface, which looks like this. So whenever you log in first for the, for the first time, you have a like um, you have a dashboard, and in the dashboard you have like, unfortunately I can't po I can't point. I don't know why it doesn't work, but uh, yes, it works. This so you have the dashboard. You have like uh, create jobs and new job, and whenever you go like on a new job, you can just paste your rule here, and you have those uh, repositories to scan, which are those things here, and 
just a little info about repositories. Each server can have multiple repositories. When I say repository, I am actually referring to a folder that sits on the data, story, data storage for one server. And basically, you can have multiple folder, folders with different names. And you can see, like, um, on one, one of our workers, we have this um, clean folder, and we have this uh, SIS folder. So basically, this is, these are the repositories. Whenever you press submit, like you press submit here, basically, those rules are being uh, fired. They will be picked up by the workers. And then when the, the, they, they finish, they just tell you, like, it wor it, it's scanned in eight seconds. This, uh, this are, is your rule. This is a um, repository. And those are the results. In this case, we didn't have any results. But basically, if we matched, matched any files, you would have their MD files in here. And you have the ER results in here. OK, cool. So I, I talked about repositories. One important thing, if you want to install this one in your uh, infrastructure, is that you have to make to be careful when, um, when you're using, uh, when you're setting up your repositories, because you need to set up a repository control file. So you have, please check out, uh, check the instruction instructions, um, because you need to set up a repository control file. And this repository control file has also some other features, which we're going to be discussing uh, next. It has some advanced features, and some of them are here, and basically uh, I'll go through them really fast. So the redirect paths uh, feature allows you to have a repository in one directory, but rather scan another directory. So think of it like a, like a symbolic link in Linux. You know, like this is the uh, repository, like mount storage, virus total samples, and then basically I say no, I'd like to redirect the scan to mount NAS uh, Clara bigger collection. So basically, from this, uh, the worker will scan this one. It's like a symbolic link, exactly like a symbolic link. Then you can have, you can search for hashes. So basically, each rule might hit on different files. And then you can search to see, search for this MD5 or SHA1 hash. How many rules did match this file? And then basically you can search for multiple hashes and you can see multiple rules that match those files. This is useful when you want to see if two Yara rules generate the same results. And you can compare and do whatever you want with them. Then you can have shareable links. Shareable links are useful if you want to share your rules with somebody else. And basically, you can see here, you have like a link. And then you can copy this link, and you can provide it to other users of the platform, and they can see your rule, regardless of if they're in the same group with you, if they same if they have the same access as you have, so pretty, pretty, this is pretty cool if, if you share rules between you. So basically, this was it, Clara in a nutshell. But it wouldn't be useful if we don't try to optimize it uh, pretty like as much as possible. So basically, I try to we try to get the most out of it. So of course, the first optimization would be the server performance. If and I think the most important one are disks. If you're running with spinning, spinning disks, you won't get a lot of uh, performance out of it. So instead, we decided of running with SSDs. We have them like uh, um, in a server, we have like eight SSDs uh, in a RAID 5 configuration. And on top of that uh, configure, uh, on top of that RAID, we decided to use an XFS file system. Because XFS is pretty fast with reading, also with writing. But it's not a lot of wear and tear on the SSDs itself. Mostly because if you're doing a lot of scans, you're not writing a lot, you're reading. 90% of our operations are read operations. So that's pretty cool. So these are the servers. You, this is the, this is the, um, this is the uh, SSD server. This is the database server. Like SSD is on top, database on the back, uh, on below. They are super micro servers. I know, crazy stuff. Um, we checked them, nothing suspicious, but you know, you never know. And we got three gigabytes per second, three gigabytes scanning speed, which is pretty impressive. We hit the ra RAID uh, read uh, speed, so unfortunately we can't get more out of that RAID. But basically, we managed to scan 10 terabytes in 30 minutes, which is pretty impressive, of course, with caching and other techniques. But um, mostly with that setup, with the server setup, 
I think 30 minutes is pretty okay in order to find uh, for new samples. We have over 30, uh, since we deployed, we have over 30,000 jobs and they all worked okay. We distributed with multiple servers, as you saw in the picture, uh, but we also have multiple servers, all of them are SSDs. And I think it's very important when you're setting up the server, no matter if it's like SSDs or spinning disks, to have the file system and the file system properly configured. And this implies that you need to set up the stripe correction, uh, the stripe, uh, RAID, RAID stripe correctly, and the number of disks. So basically, in, in, our, in our example, in our situation, we have like a 256 uh, kilo stripes, and we have like uh, seven data disks and what, one parity disk. Parity disk, sorry, which is right grade five. And of course, the mounting options in order to try to get out of mo mo the most speed out of it. Okay, so basically, the future plans, I'm, I'm the main developer of Clara. Our future, future plans are to set up, um, to set up the web interface. Sorry, to set up the web API. Um, basically, the API allowing you to execute the same, to run the same commands and to do everything as you do as a, like a web user, you can do it um, using an API. And this means that you can set up tasks that you fire your rules over your collection and you have another robot that feeds new files into your servers and then you can scan the files. You can uh, check new YAR rules that you receive from your local certs. You can check them against your files and you can do other cool stuff. So this week, I'm going to be releasing the uh, API specifications uh, and the API code. And as a gift for you, as a gift because you um, attended our session, if you want, come, come talk to me or send... Um, come talk to me. I'm going to be around here. Um, like You can also contact me on Twitter. Um, I can create an account for you on our Clara server with our virus collection. Well... Don't think that is Kaspersky's huge virus collection because I can't provide that, mostly because it's like super huge. But we have a smaller collection of 10 terabytes with most of our interesting files um, and like um, interesting attacks that you can scan your Yara rules against. So uh, please come by if you want to test it out. Also, there's a web interface. Basically, you can see it in action without installing it yourself. So going back to my quote, originally quote, I think that it should be slightly changed to this one. And I would say that Yara is the future. And if you didn't start already writing Yara rules, you should. If you want to search for the project, uh, you can find search on, on, on your favorite uh, on DuckDuckGo or your favorite search engine. Search for Kaspersky Clara Great. You can join, you can um, follow my Twitter, or you can join our chat on Telegram, where we discuss about, um, like, um, updates or improvements to Clara. And um, with this being said, I'd like to thank you for watching my presentation, and I hope it was interesting. Hello, nice talk. Thank you. Uh, may I ask, uh, Clara is scanning just files, or you plan to scan also some metadata in some DB, like sequences or n-grams? Okay, um, so basically we are using, um, Clara is using Yara. And basically what Clara does, it feeds a file, like physical file, to Yara. If Yara can do what you're saying, then Clara can also be implemented to do that. Now, n-gram, we are actually using ngram, but we have like a modified system which is not available for, uh, it's not open sourced. So whatever Yara can do, Clara can also be programmed to do that. Thank you. And the second question, yeah, sure. uh, I saw that the most of the code base is in PHP. Why have you chosen this? Most of the code base is actually Python, but the web interface is PHP. This is because of legacy reasons. Mostly because um, we had an older system web interface that we, it was written in, in PHP, and 
for another project, and basically I just use that for the web interface. But dispatcher and workers are in Python. So basically you can just uh, install them on any operating system. And it, yeah, I want to rewrite the web page in PHP, but I just wanted to have it something useful that people can use. Okay, any more questions? Hi. Hello. Do you have something to manage the similar rule in case uh, some of your colleagues create a new rule that is similar to you that you created previously that say, hey, there is another yeah, rule yeah, yeah. that is matching um, something? So there are other projects that are actually uh, meant to organize Yara rules. Currently in Clara, there's no option to have like um, similar Yara rules or um, to see if others wrote the same stuff. Mostly because we decided to just have this uh, project. Like you fire a rule on the web interface, you get the results back and that's it. Yeah, but there are other projects that are actually used to uh, cluster, to organize Yara rules, but the answer is no. Okay, any further questions? We have another question there. If I understand correctly, uh, the workers need to have local access to to the collection, to the malware collection? Uh, of course, yes. So there's no pull mechanism to uh, fetch a JIRA rule and then uh, a file uh, and then f from, the, from the dispatcher? So... Wait, so workers have the local files physically in their data store. Uh, workers, they connect to the dispatcher, and dispatcher gives them the Yara rule that right. they have to scan. But the dispatcher does not provide the file. Dispatcher does not provide any files. So, so no, file management you need to set up separately. The, the files, you can have your robots up um, feed the files to the workers directly. So there are no files being sent over the network. Um, you have the local connect collection of files in your workers. You feed them as you want. You can have like a um, distributed file system on the workers, up to you. Then what the worker, what dispatcher does, it only feeds the Yara rule and it feeds an ID. So basically the worker comes back and says, hey, I, di I, I finished the work with these Yara rules. These are the results. This is the ID of the job. Okay. So, so it's up to the worker to decide uh, which files to scan. Um, no, it's up to the user to decide which f files to scan because in the user you select those repositories. If you remember, uh, you select which repositories you want to scan. Right, and those repositories are uh, locally present on the workers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And multiple workers can have the same the repositories. This is what we're doing. We have like uh, five workers, right. and all of them have slash clean uh, repository, which you yeah, can Yeah, so see. file management is, is, is a separate process outside of the Clara system. So, sorry, I didn't understand. So file management, so distributing the malware among your workers is, is up to you, really. Of course, and we designed it like this. Basically, it's up to you to distribute the malware, the, the collection, the samples on each workers, up to you, how much, like, however you want. Okay. There are some plans on trying to get the option of, because you might run, run into some issues, like... You have a hit, yeah? How do you get the file? Mm -hmm. And basically, we have a different system that we can fetch the file by its, MD, by its MD5 or SHA. But if you don't have that system, it might be a feature of Clara to just say, hey, I want this file with this hash. And then the work, basically, the dispatcher goes to the worker and says, give me this file, and the worker is back, and then you... But it's not implemented. All right. Okay. Okay. Great. Thank you. Any other questions? I think there are none. Okay. Thanks, Dan. Thank you very much.